So Ridley Scott, hello, sir. Hi. Um, I I'm gonna cut straight to it. I like I love this movie. I love it. I loved it when I watched it. I love it when I've thought about it since. Yeah. It had it had absolutely everything I wanted an alien movie to have. Like pacey and it was terrifying it was sort of existential it was literally it ticked every single box that i hoped it would be all oh, right thank you um so congratulations on it um thank you, you i think you described your first alien movie as the texas chainsaw massacre of science fiction how would you uh, well no i i wanted a reach for texas because i've only met toby hooper once actually and i watched i never watched it when i was it was a big poster in piccadilly circus i just look at this poster i'm you know i'm like 30 in my 30s at that point and I, it's very uneasy. It looks vaguely really f- nasty. I never watch it for that reason. So now I've got Alien. I'm sitting in some small concrete screening room at Fox in the midsummer. The doors open, and I'm watching two films. I watched again The Exorcist one, which I think is spectacularly well done, and great idea, a spectacular idea. But then I I was, I'd saved Texas Chainsaw, so now I'm watching it. And Walter Hill walks in behind me and says, what the hell are you watching these films for? I'm learning how to scare people, you know, watch it or f- off. <laughs> and then he walks into the hamburger and it begins. And he gets about as far as one bite. And I think by then we're in the coach, that little cheap van. The kid, they've picked the kid up, was, looks at him, gets a penna, cuts his palm, goes like that. From that moment on, we're in real trouble. Walter never ate his hamburger. I know he just sat there, tried, looked back at him, at the end he was like that, just one bite of a hamburger. It's a really, talking about how scary Ooh. these films are, this is a really satisfying film for lots and lots of different reasons. Um, and I think one of the biggest satisfying pay, payoffs is the fact that this alien, the xenomorph, we've not seen it properly for 20 years now, and it's still terrifying. Um, was, was that ever a concern for you, that like it wouldn't be as scary anymore? Yeah, I'd cooked it. I think that we overcooked it in a, you know, because mine was a shoot 'em up and shoot 'em out and you're going to die in the old dark house. So I'm a B movie, really. It's a B movie plot. But we did an AA plus film because of great cast, great sets. He's special. Without him, it wouldn't be the same movie. Problem is, all good directors... All good film, but they followed through, shoot him up, shoot him out. So to me, I think he, he wore out. B- by the time you get to the final one, you've got him in a glass box. You're studying him, so immediately he's impotent. You can't do that to him. It's like suddenly putting a tar- shark in a tank. You've got to keep him in the water. Um, so I felt he was done. So when I did, but I said, I can lift the lid off this by asking the key question, who, why, what, and when, and who created this for what purpose? So that provoked um, uh, Prometheus. Prometheus was very successful. The question at the end of it were, there was something about some of the notes when you look on social media and the good film, but, but they missed him and the evolution, Chessmaster, Facebook, all that stuff. And I uh, went, you know what? And I'm in process then of planning Covenant We've got to have reintroduce him. So the, the, we took on a, a different direction. The engineers didn't make him. David made him, which I thought was far more interesting. And, the, you know, the devil's hands, the idle hands of the devil's workshop is a great thing. Why, um, like, looking at your, your history of work, you're incre- both as a, a, a producer, exec producer and a director, you're incredibly prolific, but you're not a man that usually goes back onto old ground. No. So what, what was it about the alien kind of universe that have, that's made you instill this passion in you to create f- several more movies? Fresh, uh, frustration. I, I felt it wasn't shouldn't be dead and it should be running. Star Wars is still running. I mean, the alien franchise should be into War of the Worlds now. That's where I'm going. Is that is that the plan? Because I've, right. I've heard the next one is what they, you've, uh, they don't know yet. That's perhaps. what we're doing, Fox. Okay, okay. The idea is to do more and more. You're going to think of like what, like spin-off movies as well, more more prequels uh, as well as sequels. Well, I don't, What's the kind I of don't love spin-offs. Because I, I know they're successful, but I think you want to keep constant, keep one thread, one pipeline. This is it. Don't do too many of these. You can do lots of film, but keep him in there. You can evolve him, but the stories will always hook around this threat. Speaking but there could be many of him. 
Speaking about the future, actually, um, you've, you've made comments on uh, Blumkamp's uh, Alien 5 uh, that they were working on, of course, which would have continued the Ripley story. Yeah. Have you had any thoughts at all of uh, perhaps kind of bridging the prequels and the original film? Ever thought about maybe de-aging people like Sigourney, as they do in a lot of films at the moment? Well, I think that's not a particularly new idea, first of all. Secondly, I think they cooked it, put an orange in his mouth with crackling on his back, Frankly, when they did Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, the Come least said on. about that, the better. <laughs> Yikes. So I think you want to keep, once you've got something really good, don't spread it around. And I think I was part of the process with that with Bloom Camp, And I was going to be in there as a producer. said, yeah, yeah, by all means. But there was no real script came out, and I was doing my other thing. So if Fox is the one who decided not to, so I don't know. I think we've got, this is enough. Just keep going down this route. You'll think you maybe uh, you'll get to you'll get to your first film again and maybe think maybe maybe it's time to continue the story. Totally. After all, like Star Wars have done. Totally, totally. I can't follow Star Wars anymore. I don't know what it's about. Do you? Yeah, it's, it's still good. It's yeah, kind okay. of pop. It's a popcorn action. I know. Sort of fantasy yeah. Stuff, no, I think the George Lucas's was fan mm. was seminal for me. Yeah. As was I was put in the same box as two thousand one. You know, 2001 was a, something very close to NASA, and the reality of that possibility was what was most interesting. Hal, in many respects, was the star of the movie, apart from Stanley. Um, but then, you know, Star Wars was a fairy story in space, but with hardcore hardware. And I thought that was absolutely wonderful with the prince, the princess, and the cowboy, you know, and Harrison. I thought it was brilliant. And it, I was depressed for I think six months when I saw it. I went, the Phantom Menace. And I was, I was going to do, I was about to do Tristan and Sol. I said, I'm not doing Tristan and Sol. I've got to think of something else. <laughs> in that time, somebody offered me Alien. So well, Ridley, I went, whoa. I, I love this movie. I can't wait to see what you do in the future with it. Good luck with it, my friend. Thank you, man. Absolute pleasure. Hi. Oh my God. Sorry. Hey. Zane's got a, a, a great voice. I'll just leave it at that. I haven't wanted to meet you. Oh, uh, yeah, we haven't met each other yet. I've got some lipstick oh. on your teeth.